Today is a WRL weather alert day. We've had showers for hours and we have more of that to come. I'll show you how much we'll see and how it could affect the rest of your day. And our team of meteorologists is working hard to keep you safe. Amy Wilmoth is in the WRL Storm Tracker with a look at possible trouble spots this hour. You see that rain coming down. It is a WRL weather alert day and we are here to keep you safe all day. Good afternoon to you. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Renee Chu. Thanks for joining us. The rain's coming down pretty hard at Dorothea Dix Park as you take a live look. Our team of meteorologists is tracking these hour by hour conditions. WRL's Amy Wilmoth is in the storm tracker with a look at the roads. Yeah, our team coverage begins with Elizabeth Gardner in the WRL Severe Weather Center and that look at radar. The rain started this morning at about 7 a.m. and it's been on and off ever since. And so we're seeing pockets of steady to heavy rain in some places. And this is the way things are going to be for the rest of the day. All the way into the evening, we're going to see waves of rain coming through. You can see this heavier band that's right here around 540 and up around Durham heading up toward I-85. Again, we do have some pockets where we're seeing some drier conditions, but we have a long way to go in terms of how much rain we will see. We'll zoom in here and take a look at where meteorologist Amy Wilmoth is right now, just south of downtown in the storm tracker and Amy what is happening right there where you are well Elizabeth I'll tell you you were right on I was watching you all morning and you're mentioning how we could get some heavier rain right at the noon hour and that's what we're seeing we're seeing the rain really pick up here in Wake County especially the northern half of Wake County we're on Western Boulevard near downtown uh, not seeing any trouble on the roads but certainly the rain coming down at a pretty good clip at this point uh, at some point during the day we might see some uh, more ponding and maybe some localized flooding as we start to add up those rain totals. So far, I checked before I left, we've seen about a tenth to a quarter of an inch across the viewing area. So we have a ways to go, and I do think that we're really going to have some heavy rain, some pockets of heavy rain for that evening commute, which could be tricky. Elizabeth, I'll send it back to you for a look at the timeline for the additional rain. Yeah, Amy, we were really lucky this morning because the rain started around 7 to 8 o'clock, and a lot of the commute was, was ending already by that point, but it is going to be really messy for the evening commute. The rain continues all day and into the evening. Everybody sees it, and we're looking at about an inch, as Amy said, or maybe even some higher totals in some other parts of the viewing area, especially up here in the northeast. Look at all this rain. We may even see the cold front itself coming through between 5 and 8 o'clock. Along that front where you see the darker red shaded areas, that's where we could have a few isolated thunderstorms. Not expecting any of the storms to produce any wind damage or to be severe, but definitely a band of some heavier rain and some blustery wind. That moves out of the viewing area right around 10 p.m., but I'll show you some wraparound moisture for tomorrow morning coming up. This is a live look at North Hills where the rain is coming down pretty steady to heavy, and it's not just the rain. It's the temperatures too. 49 degrees right now. Our wind is coming out of the east seven miles per hour, so it's chilly, it's rainy, it's even a little bit breezy. It's 51 in Fayetteville, 52 Clinton and 51 in Goldsboro. Everybody else still sitting in the 40s and we're really just going to creep into the low 50s for this afternoon. And the last time we saw afternoon highs in the 50s was back last March. Coming up, we're going to talk more about uh, the map that shows how much rainfall we've seen and how much more to come later on today. Elizabeth, thanks. And you can plan ahead for impactful weather with the WRL News app. It allows you to watch radar in real time to see when storms are in your area. Be sure you have the WRL News app installed on your phone. We are not expecting severe weather today, but should that change, turn on alerts to get notified about severe weather in your location. It is free wherever you download your apps. Breaking news right now at noon. In the last 30 minutes, police were on the scene of a shooting in an East Raleigh neighborhood. It happened just before 1130 on Summer Kings Court. That's just about a mile away from St. Augustine's University. WRL's Chelsea Donovan joins us now live from the scene. Chelsea, what have you learned? Yeah, this is still a very active scene here with multiple Raleigh police officers on the scene starting their initial investigation. This happened on Summer King's Court. It's right near North King Charles Drive. Let me show you the scene uh, is centered around this duplex here where you can see the detectives obviously starting to gather their evidence, interview some folks. And what we know is that a call came in around 1106 this morning. And what Raleigh police are telling us is that a male juvenile was suffering from several gunshot wounds. He was taken to the hospital. It appears right now that it is non-life-threatening injuries. Uh, it also appears that they have no suspect in custody and are classifying this as an isolated incident, so no threat to the public. But I did just notice, and we can have our photojournalist 
Kurt Tremper kind of zoom in past the crime scene tape. It looks to appear uh, what looks to be a bullet hole and an evidence marker there. You can see on the side of the siding here at this duplex. So still a very active investigation. You can tell that they're still stored, starting the initial stages of this. Speaking with folks here on scene and try to gather more information. But let's reiterate, we have a male juvenile with several gunshot wounds taken to a nearby hospital. Looks like non-life threatening injuries. No suspect in custody. Uh, and this is an isolated incident. Of course, we'll keep you updated and bring you more here online uh, and on the air as well. Live in Raleigh, Chelsea Donovan, WRL News. Also new at noon, Cumberland County deputies have arrested a man after two people were shot. WRL's Noah Klein joins us now with what we know about this investigation. Noah. Jeff, deputies were in the area of Gillespie Street in Fayetteville around 1.30 this morning when they heard shots go off. While they were investigating, multiple people called emergency communications saying there was a shooting in that area. Deputies arrested Bradley Donahue. Let's show you the map here. They say he shot two people on Gillespie Street, was trying to get away, and actually tried to enter a deputy's car before then running off in another direction. We know one of the victims is a man, the other a woman there in the hospital getting treatment. A third person was in that area, but they were not shot. Donahue, that's why he's facing those three counts of attempted murder, two counts of assault with a deadly weapon, and two counts of discharging a firearm into occupied property. He's actually being processed right now, the sheriff's office. They haven't released that mug shot just yet. We'll stay on top of this story as it develops. Today, Durham is taking steps to keep the public safer and reduce vacancies within the police department. WRL's Kelsey Coffey tells us how a hiring event today aims to change perceptions about crime in Durham. Right now, 27% of Durham police officer positions are vacant. People who are interested can come here to DPD headquarters later today to get more information about how they can serve. Although today's hiring event was previously scheduled, it comes after a series of shootings in Durham. Five reported shootings in just three days. Our WREL investigates team looked into Durham crime trends. They researched how many charges have been filed against people who live in Durham between 2019 and 2024. Those numbers are up 110 percent. Durham Mayor Leo Williams says they're working towards fixing this issue. We have historically had communities that have, that have, you know, had to deal with crime and homicides. We're not ignoring that. We accept that. But one thing you're going to know is we're also working toward that. More officers may be needed now more than ever. Tonight's hiring event is scheduled for 6 o'clock, and you can attend that here in person or online. Kelsey Coffey, WREL News in Durham. A hiring event at Fort Liberty will connect dozens of employers with military families today. There are thousands of open jobs currently, including local, national, and remote positions. Today's hiring event runs from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. at Iron Mike Conference Center on Rock Merritt Avenue. More than 60 employers will be on site with job opportunities for veterans, military spouses, and members of the National Guard or Reserve. President-elect Donald Trump will now have a path to enact an agenda that could profoundly change America. Republicans now hold control of the White House and hold majorities in the House and Senate. The question now will be how large next year's House majority becomes and whether the GOP can widen the margin of a handful of seats. This morning, former Deputy Director of the FBI Andrew McCabe weighed in on President-elect Trump's nominating Florida Republican Matt Gates to the lead Justice Department position. We spent a lot of months uh, debating whether or not Donald Trump actually means the things he says about the Department of Justice and the FBI, whether he's actually going to try to really dismantle those organizations in a serious way. I think the selection of Matt Gates is a clear indication of how just how uh, squarely he intends to do that. Senator Tom Tillis serves on the Judiciary Committee. He said that the Senate will give Gates an honest look and that the investigations involving him will be part of that process. Stocks are stalling on their post-election rally. Not a whole lot of movement um, on the Dow Jones Industrial, down 90 points at this hour, but also the S&P 500 in the red, down 14 points, and NASDAQ, not a whole lot of movement, down 40 points at this hour. 
Spending in Wake County outperformed state and national averages between January and September. Visit Raleigh and the Greater Raleigh Sports Alliance hosted more than 100 events, tournaments, conferences, festivals, and groups in the third quarter of this year. And those numbers translate to a 7% increase in hotel tax collections, totaling more than $30 million. The food and beverage tax brought in close to $35 million through September. And the numbers could be even better next year. In the third quarter of 2024, 137 events for future dates, generating a projected $75 million in economic impact. And happening right now in the WRL Life Center, we have just learned that the Tampa Bay Rays will be playing their 2025 home games at the Yankee Spring Training Field in Tampa. This is Steinbrenner Field in Tampa. Tropicana Field, as you know, was badly damaged by Hurricane Milton. Most of its roof was shredded. Uh, but the Rays principal owner said Steinbrenner Field in Tampa is the best fit for this right now. It has about 11,000 seats. It's the largest of the train these spring training sites in Florida. So they will be playing baseball, but it will be with a facade mimicking Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. The Yankees are also going to be getting about $15 million in revenue for hosting the race. Michelle, thanks. Next at noon, who will replace Hoda Kotb on the Today Show Anchor Desk? We have the answer, and it is a very familiar face. Also, should Meta, the parent company of Facebook, be allowed to own other social sites like Instagram and WhatsApp? what the Federal Trade Commission has to say about that. Plus, staying healthy in space at 1230, how the two stranded astronauts are handling their fitness now 140 days after they were supposed to come home. Keep watching WRAL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257. Today, the Raleigh Youth Choir will perform a benefit concert for Western North Carolina. The concert starts at 7 p.m. at the Raleigh Memorial Auditorium. All the money from the ticket sales will go to Notes of Hope to replace instruments and sheet music destroyed by Helene. WRL's Ken Smith is MC for tonight's event. Indoors, that'll be good. That'll be a good thing. <laughs> yeah, well, outdoors, it's a little messy out there. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner tracking this rain that will be with us through much of the day and even through the evening commute. Looking at what's happening right now, dual Duffler 5000 radar showing a, actually a nice hole in the precipitation back to the west. When we take a look at the computer model, you'll see it's a small hole and there's plenty more rain behind it. So this is the way things have been for a good bit of the day. You know, the rain will taper off a little bit and then it comes on back. Um, it's been a little heavier right now in uh, North Raleigh, but again, we've got a little break in the precipitation that's likely to be moving through. You can see that back here across uh, parts of Chatham County and over towards uh, Chapel Hill, but definitely looking pretty Pretty wet across much of Wake County right now. We head up to the north. Steady rain from Roxborough to Henderson over toward Roanoke Rapids. Um, of course, this rain is affecting the entire viewing area. And we do have the storm tracker out taking a look where the rain is pretty steady to heavy here in Raleigh. The storm tracker is moving down Western Boulevard toward the Beltline. And you can see exactly where that is uh, headed. This is going to be uh, headed down Western. You can see the Beltline there, that intersection. Uh, a lot of headlights. Everybody's got their headlights on. Windshield wipers going. A lot Lots and lots of water on the road out there right now. So if you do have to travel anytime today, just you know, plan a little extra time and some patience. You may run into some messy spots, especially during the evening commute. 24-hour rainfall, even though the rain started at around 7 or 8 o'clock this morning, in a lot of uh, cases it's been on the lighter side or there have been you know, some pockets where the rain hasn't been falling. So a lot of folks just seeing a trace of rain, either that or a tenth to a quarter of an inch so far. Uh, we still have plenty of rain to the west and back to the west we're seeing some of that rainfall add up a little bit. So, so all day rain, looking at some isolated thunder storms during the evening commute and it is just chilly out there. Temperatures climbing from the upper 40s into the low 50s. Here's a look at our cold front and that cold front moving toward the mountains. That's going to be the back edge of the rain, but we still have all of this to go before we get uh, a real solid break in the rain in our area. So plenty, plenty more rain in the forecast. We take a look at Futurecast and you can see we'll pause it there right around four o'clock. It's still looking really messy for the evening commute. Plus, that's when we may end up with this band that produces some thunderstorms. There's 
6 p.m. That's kind of moving across the triangle. That's likely where the front is. And around 8 or 9 o'clock, it moves out of the viewing area. And then we may be finished with rain for a little while. But look what happens. That low is going to swing some more rain down early tomorrow morning. So from the triangle to Goldsboro, up here in our northeastern counties, we could have some more wet conditions during the morning commute. Take a live look at downtown Raleigh. You know, it is pouring out there. A lot of people with umbrellas, raincoats. It just looks really messy. This is a look at our Jimmy V camera. 49 is the temperature. Our dew point's 45, so it's uh, it's messy out there for sure. 51 in Fayetteville, 52 in Clinton, 45 in Roxboro and in South Hill. And temperatures with that rain and the cool air that was already in place kind of kind of lock the cool air in. So maybe up to 54 in Raleigh, 52 in Durham, 58 in Fayetteville, but that may be wishful thinking. It may end up being just a little bit cooler than that. Tomorrow morning, we'll start off with temperatures in the mid 40s. Our normal low is 40 degrees. We clear things out nicely for the weekend. As a matter of fact, Friday afternoon will be a little clearer and our Sunday morning should be down into the upper 30s. The afternoons over the weekend feeling comfortable in the mid to upper 60s. 64 is our normal high temperature and we'll see some 70s for it next week. And I know a lot of folks may be looking forward to that. But in the meantime, it is a WREL weather alert day. It's likely to be really slow going for the evening commute. So to keep that in mind, plan for that. Uh, other, otherwise, we're looking at some lovely conditions starting late Friday into the weekend. We're following the tropics. We have a system that is trying to develop. I'll show you where it's headed coming up. We are so excited about the news in our Today family, and that is the person sitting right next to yeah. me, our dear friend and talented, <laughs> wonderful, hardworking, most worthy of this. Craig Melvin <laughs> is the new anchor of the Today Show. Lots of applause, lots of praise. That's how the Today Show broke the news that Craig Melvin will be replacing Hoda Kotb as the new co-host of the Today Show. And we are so happy to be one of the first NBC stations in the country to talk to Craig live. Craig, so good to see you. Congratulations. We are so thrilled for you and so happy that NBC News kept it within the Today Show family. You're such a familiar face and beloved by millions across the country. What did you think when you learned that you would be sitting alongside Savannah? Uh, Renee, I, it, it hasn't really sunk in yet. Mm -hmm. I, um, and I mean, I've you know, known for some weeks now, and it still, uh, it still hasn't really sunk in. I, you know, I grew up, like a lot of folks, watching the Today Show. I watched Brian and Katie as a kid, and you know, I started in the local news there in South Carolina, and mm -hmm then went to Washington, D.C. So even when I started at the show several years ago, you know, I, I, I was happy filling in from time to time and being a correspondent. But, um, but, but when they came to my office a few weeks ago and offered me the gig, I was, uh, as you might imagine, uh, I was a, you know, a bit emotional. But mm -hmm. as, as we sit here right now talking, it is a heart filled with gratitude. Uh, I am just... I am grateful for this, this opportunity. And Craig, I watched uh, the segment when the news was announced that you were going to be taking over for Hoda. And it's just clear how the entire Today Show family, they think the world of you, they're so happy for you. And Hoda herself said you were literally made for the job and that you're the right person for it. What does it mean to you uh, that Hoda said those words? Well, you know, it's, it's funny uh, because if you've ever spent any time with, with Hoda Kapi, I, I mean, she's just, you spend two minutes with her and you're ready to like run through a brick wall. Um, I, I say to her all the time, God, you'd be a great college football coach. <laughs> um, and we've had a number of conversations uh, off television over the last few weeks um, because it is, you know, it's a, it's a big job. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a little nervous about it. And she's, she's his, his from the very beginning. From the very beginning, she has said to me, this is you, like this, this, is, this is you. Like, and, and so I, I feel, thanks to her, um, prepared and ready. Um, because a lot of times, I mean, you know this, I mean, sometimes you go through life and you don't necessarily feel like you deserve something good, even though you've worked hard, you just, for whatever reason, you may not feel like you deserve it, like you've earned it. And she has convinced me over the last few weeks that I have earned it and that I do deserve it. 
and I am worthy. And that's, that's the power of Hoda Kapi. Here's the thing, though, and I said this to her on the phone a few days ago. I was like, hey, this is real cute, you saying that you're leaving. You're not leaving because we're not going to let you leave. Like, you're going to be back doing, like, we're not, we're not letting her go. This mm -hmm. is, so we, I, we're going to keep her in the family, and you're going to see her on the show periodically. We can't, can't do without Hoda. We can't. And, well, just like any morning show, you know, we're a family as well. I see it on the Today Show. And this work family really knows you really quickly. We want to play this. This just uh, made us chuckle. We know you really well. I got you this. <laughs> I knew that you would cry. Sorry, by the way, I held it together. Yeah, you did. Yes. I know. I know. And I saw you get through the announcement without the tissue, so that was impressive, Craig. But I know you're very emotional, too. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very emotional guy, although what saved me yeah. was a conversation I had with my wife at about 6.45 this morning. She was boarding a flight. She's, she's coming home from, from uh, California. And she's like, listen, I know how you can get sometimes, <laughs> but you have to remember this is a clip that is going to live on for a long time. <laughs> and do you want to be the guy who's ugly crying for four minutes <laughs> as they accept a dream job, or do you want to hold it together? And, and I, that was, thank God she said that. Now, here's what you don't know. Um, <laughs> Renee, I have spent the better part of the last four hours weeping like a baby okay. uh, periodically. <laughs> and, but, but not, I, but they're, they're, they're tears of, again, just gratitude. Like, you don't know this about me, but I don't come from a whole heck of a lot. And, and today isn't just about me getting this mm -hmm. dream gig. It's about my grandparents. It's about my parents who sacrifice more than most people will ever know. It's, it's about them and, and getting to a point in my life where, as my dad said to me yesterday, you, you've made us proud. Do you need the tissues? You might need the tissues here. I know. <laughs> nope, I don't, okay. I do not. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when you get to a point mm -hmm. where you realize that you, you, know, you make your parents yeah. proud and my kids and this is, a, it's about them. So I'm just, I'm well, grateful. Are, and mm -hmm. you know, as I said to the, to the team downstairs, my biggest hope is I just don't screw it up. You are living up to that legacy, Craig. Congratulations. It is so great to see NBC rewarding your hard work. Today's show viewers will benefit for sure with you in that chair beside Savannah starting on that 7 o'clock hour on January 13th. And with our morning news here, we look forward to handing the daily baton off to you every weekday morning. Craig, all the best to you. Thank you. Mernay, thank you. Tell everybody at Ariel I said hi. Will do. Congrats, Craig. That is great stuff. Can't wait for it. Now, the government's monopoly case against Meta is moving forward. How the outcome could impact the future of social media. And move over, Sheehan and Timu. Amazon is coming for you, the new app that's competing for customer dollars. happening right now in the WREL Live Center. NC DMV operations are being severely impacted by computer outages right now. They have this message on their website telling you all about it. They say they've been having sporadic connections for the past 24 hours. They have stopped processing transactions at the state's 112 driver license offices until this problem is resolved. License plate agencies, online services and self kiosk services, they are all having connection issues right now. The antitrust case against Mark Zuckerberg's Meta will go to trial. A federal judge denied the social media giant's request for a summary judgment in the government's monopoly case against it Wednesday. Meta owns Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. The FTC seeks to break up Meta. Meta claims its stake in the social media market is not as massive as it once was. The judge said in his ruling both sides have made impressive arguments, but only a trial can decide the outcome. We are tracking road conditions on this WRL weather alert day, and Elizabeth Gardner returns with your hour-by-hour -hour forecast after the break. Prescription drugs help many people with their mental and physical health, but common mistakes could affect how well they work. The top three things you should avoid. First, here's a look at the winning lottery numbers.
It is a WRL weather alert day, and our team of meteorologists is working hard to keep you safe. The WRL storm tracker is watching road conditions, so you know what to expect. But we begin with Elizabeth Gardner in the WRL Severe Weather Center right now, Elizabeth. Watching that radar, of course, we have a lot of rain on the radar. We also have a lot of spots where we're seeing some breaks in the precipitation. But the cold front is still back in the mountains, and there's a lot of rain ahead of it. So we're going to continue to see rain on and off. We had some heavier rain here sort of in the northeastern part of Wake County, starting to taper off a little bit in western Wake County. But again, we're going to continue to see these waves of rain uh, as we get through the remainder of the day. Storm Tracker is still out to right here on Western Boulevard, uh, cruising around, taking a look at uh, how things are shaping up. It's starting to move into a slightly drier uh, spot, but even in dry places, you can still see, you know, there's still some sprinkles happening out there, lots of wet conditions on the roads. Roads are, uh, are pretty soaked right now because the rain started around 7 or 8 o'clock this morning. So no matter where you go, we're going to have rain on and off for the rest of the day, and it's likely to total up to around an inch or so as an average. Everybody's going to see this good soaking rain, which we desperately need coming up in a few minutes. I'm going to show you uh, where we are moving with our drought monitor, and you can imagine it's not the direction we would want to go. As we get into the evening commute, there may be a line of thunderstorms that develops. It's not likely to be severe, but there could be some heavier rain along the front as that moves on through, and we're finished with that by around 9 or 10 o'clock, but we may have some wraparound moisture for early tomorrow morning, so we may still have some folks dealing with some rain for the morning commute. We take a live look at Apex right now. Apex is in a little bit of a lull, but we are still Still seeing some puddles out there and uh, people walking around, you know, in, in the lingering drizzle. 49 is our temperature, so it is chilly, it is damp. Our wind is out of the east at around 7 miles per hour. Mid-40s in Roxboro and South Hill, 50 Southern Pines, 53 degrees in Clinton. And we're going to struggle to make it too far up into the 50s today. Likely to see the coldest afternoon that we've seen since last March. And the rain will be with us on and off. There are going to be some breaks in the precipitation, but it'll continue all the way until around 10 or 11 with some redeveloping moisture. Your first thing tomorrow, again, coming up, I'm going to show you who is likely to see that. We are, you know, has you covered always when it comes to tracking any type of weather. When we're not on the air, you can track it all on the WRL News app. Be sure you have the WRL News app installed on your phone. You can turn on those alerts and get updates on this inconvenient weather right where you live. It's available for free for Apple and Android devices. <laughs> And happening right now in the WRL Live Center, we're monitoring some activity, some police activity that's going on on I-40 eastbound on Hammond Road. If you look over here, you can see uh, there are about five or six police cruisers. They're blocking the exit ramp um, onto I-40 eastbound. Uh, we're not sure exactly what is going on here yet. You can see one of the cruisers uh, just leaving the scene there, but a lot of activity, a lot of people walking around, uh, checking out the area. So we're going to stay on top of this and figure out what's going on here. Again, I-40 eastbound and Hammond Road is where this is happening right now. NASA shutting down concerns over the health of two astronauts stranded in space more than 150 days longer than planned. Recent images of Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore prompted questions about possible weight loss and the status of their health. Wilmore, a former football star for Tennessee Tech, says he is working out every day. And this week, Williams said she weighs the same as she did at launch, adding zero gravity can affect their appearance in space. I think things shift around quite a bit. You know, there's you probably heard of a fluid shift where um, folks in space, you know, their heads look a little bit bigger because the fluid evens out along the body. Williams and Wilmer's return to Earth has been significantly delayed after helium leaks and thruster issues emerged on Boeing Starliner back in June. They were only expected to stay in space for roughly a week. Now they will fly home in a different capsule with the SpaceX Crew-9 mission in February. An NC State alum and a NASA astronaut knows about spending months in outer space. Tonight, Christina Cook will be recognized for her scientific contributions. Governor Cooper will present eight North Carolinians, the state's highest civilian honor, and she will be one of them. The North Carolina Awards Banquet and Ceremony will be held at the Marriott City Center at 7 p.m. All proceeds from this year's awards will go to the North Carolina Disaster Relief Fund to help communities recover from Hurricane Helene. Cook spent 328 days in space from 2019 to 2020, the longest continuous time spent in space by a woman. 
We've seen the intense smoke and volcanic ash of the recent eruption in eastern Indonesia from the ground, but now we are getting a look at the images from space. You can actually see the bright red and orange glow of the lava down there, as well as the thick columns of smoke. Mount Luatobi has two peaks, Luatobi Laki Laki and Luatobi Perempuan. Now, it is one of 120 active volcanoes in Indonesia right now. Fall foliage has reached its peak in one of the deepest gorges in Japan. Tourists are enjoying the autumn foliage season by trolley. The Kurobi Gorge Railway says the summer heat delayed the season, but the recent cold temperature helped the colors change. The autumn foliage peak is expected to last until next week. Major retailers are failing to protect people from hazardous chemicals and plastics in the products they sell. That's according to a nonprofit consumer product safety organization named Toxic Free Future. Of the top 50 retailers, 17 received a grade of F, placing them in the report's toxic hall of shame. Lowest ranked retailers include restaurant giants like McDonald's, Chipotle, Subway, and Yum Brands, which owns KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut. Only five companies in the top 50 retailers earn an A or A minus, and that would be Sephora, Target, and Walmart among them. The Onion has purchased conspiracy theorist Alex Jones's media empire. The satirical news company bought Infowars. It plans to rebuild the site featuring content creators and humor writers. The money generated from the sale is meant to satisfy Jones's estate creditors, comprised largely of the families of the 2012 Sandy Hook shooting. Jones repeated claims that the shooting was a hoax. Juries found him liable for defamation and awarded the families nearly a one and a half billion dollars. Sleep can be harder to come by as we age. Some of the issues that keep people from getting quality shut eye. Plus, a unique dinosaur display is about to make its public debut. Why this dinosaur has green bones and how it got its name, Natalie. As we age, our sleep needs and habits change. While we tend to sleep more in our younger years, this gradually decreases as we get older. More than half of adults over the age of 65 complain of at least one sleep problem. Sleep tends to get shorter and more interrupted in the middle of the night. We also have less deep sleep and less restorative quality sleep. The issues can stem from a variety of things like taking certain medications or conditions like sleep apnea. Prescription drugs help many people with their mental and physical health, but pharmacists say common mistakes could affect their efficiency. This is one of the examples, one of the top problems, storing medicine in the bathroom cabinet. That's because the humidity from showers and sinks can compromise the chemical composition of the drugs. While storing medications in kitchen cabinets or in bedroom nightstands may be more temperature stable, this could make them more easily accessible to children and pets. One way to keep them safe is by investing in child locks. It is the first of its kind, a Christmas movie trail, where you can go to check out the sets of your favorite Hallmark movies. And you could call them mighty morphing power wheels. Coming up, how this new type of wheel could make stairs more accessible to people who use wheelchairs. A very unique dinosaur is going on display this weekend at the Los Angeles Natural History Museum. Meet Natalie. That's Natalie with a G in front. The fossil is one of a kind because it is the only green bone dinosaur in the world. The 75 foot sauropod was discovered in Utah's Badlands in 2007. Paleontologists say the long necked dinosaur lived about 150 million years ago. And they named the fossil Natalie with that silent G because of all the biting gnats in the area where it was discovered. The bones got their greenish tint due to the minerals in the riverbed where the fossils were discovered. So neat. Connecticut revealed the first Christmas movie trail in the country, appropriately named, you guessed it, the Connecticut Christmas Movie Trail. It showcases all 22 holiday movies that were filmed in the state. It includes a mix of dining spots, accommodations, and attractions featured in Hallmark, Lifetime, and Netflix. Leaders hope this provides a tourism boost to local businesses. 
And today would be the perfect day to sit there and binge watch a couple of uh, Hallmark movies, Netflix, you name it, right? Just stay indoors because this is just a mess up there. It is. And, you know, it's not just the rain. It's the temperatures that are going along with it. You know, we've had such a mild fall so far. And, boy, you know, we're getting hit by this chilly air, that's for sure. So we're starting to see a few breaks in the uh, precipitation in our southwestern counties right now. Plenty of rain from Goldsboro up the I-95 corridor and into Virginia. We will see more waves of this. As a matter of fact, if you look back towards Charlotte, you can see the next wave that's getting ready to push through. So um, even if you've noticed the precipitation starting to taper off, uh, unfortunately, we're not out of the woods just yet. We zoom in and it's a little drier for Durham and Chapel Hill right now. This heavier rain starting to lift out of Wake County on up toward Lewisburg and uh, toward Rocky Mount and eventually on up toward uh, Roanoke Rapids. And again, in Fayetteville towards Sanford, Southern Pines also starting to see a little bit of a break in the precipitation. We take a look at our storm tracker, which is moving up Capitol Boulevard right now, past the Beltline, uh, trying to get back into some of that rain there. And we'll take a look at what the storm tracker is seeing. And you can tell it's not pouring down rain right there right now, but it does look like we're going to have more waves of rain that come in between now and the evening commute. So if you do have to travel, you know, around the evening commute time through dinner time, we'll likely have a lot more heavy rain that moves in. And so it could be a real mess for the evening commute. How much rain have we seen so far? It's been in some places only a trace, others a tenth of an inch and a couple of pockets of about a quarter of an inch of rain so far. But if you look back to the west, you can see the blue shaded areas. That's going to be half an inch to maybe six or seven tenths of an inch. So um, folks who started seeing that rain a little earlier, we're starting to see it add up a bit more in the rain gauges. We're going to see rain all the way into the evening with a few scattered thunderstorms possible around the time of the evening commute and just chilly temperatures all day long. Here's a look at satellite and radar. And you can see plenty of rain back to our west. The back edge of the rain is coming through the mountains right now, though. And so that will put a stop to it, at least for a little while. We check Futurecast and we're seeing more waves of rain all the way through five, six, seven, eight o'clock. That one band comes through with a chance of thunderstorms and then we're sort of finished and up at around 11 o'clock. <laughs> Look what happens in the morning on Friday. Wrap around moisture around a low, brings us some light showers at around 5 a.m. and some scattered rain from Raleigh eastward right about the time of the evening commute. So along uh, the I-95 corridor, you might run into a little bit more rain for the commute tomorrow morning. All total, we could see as much as an inch in the south and maybe up to an inch and a quarter in our some of our northern counties and possibly where we see that extra band of rain tomorrow morning, we could see another quarter of an inch. So in some places, we could be half an inch to three quarters of an inch. We take a look in Raleigh where the rain has tapered off at least for a little while, but you can see the wet streets here. That's Jones Street right here outside of the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. It's chilly out there. Temperatures are anywhere from the mid 40s to low 50s, which is going to hold it there in the 50s for the rest of the day. Tropical Storm 19 is moving west at 12 miles per hour. It's likely to move on shore here in Central America, and because of its interaction with land over the next week or so, it may be hard pressed to redevelop as it comes back out into the Gulf of Mexico next week. We have a long time to watch this, but the models are starting to uh, kind of give some you know, question marks about whether it will really redevelop back in the Gulf of Mexico. So something that we'll be watching, but it looks less likely than it did just 24 hours ago. WREL weather alert day for some messy conditions through the evening commute and even through dinner time. Again, right around the evening commute, we're going to see that heavier band of rain that comes through with a chance of a thunderstorm. Saturday and Sunday look gorgeous. Pretty weekend with lots of sunshine and mid to upper 60s. And it keeps warming up next week, too, with some highs in the 70s. The Wake County School District says it is making upgrades to staff training and conducting an internal review following a series of WRL's reports about its handling of an allegedly abusive teacher. Keely Arthur joins us now to talk about those charges and the troubling new details you have found in this case, Keely. I mean, Jeff, this is a, I was telling you, two-year-long investigation. Now, earlier this year, I told you allegations of student abuse at the hands of a special education teacher, James Rencher. Following those reports, the Wake County School District District contacted police and eventually arrested Rencher. But this is what is new. We have also uncovered that leadership within the school district let that alleged pattern of behavior continue. Records show that Rencher was allowed to transfer to a new school within Wake County School District, despite those reports to school leadership. And that is where he allegedly harmed two more students with special needs. Why do you think they were so quiet for so long? 
because he's disabled and the other kids are disabled, sweep it under the rug. Nobody's going to listen. And that's what I think part of it is. That's one of the parents from an alleged East Wake victim tonight on WRL News at 6. I'm going to interview a former co-worker of James Renter. I'm also going to lay out that new timeline of reported assaults and show you just how long the district allegedly failed to tell parents and police. Now you uncovered a lot there. How were you able to piece this all together? We spent two years on this story and worked closely with the families, some of the victims, special needs advocates, and some brave workers who had reported this. The goal for all of these folks was to certainly get this out in the open and create change. And we've seen in other cases arrests made for people who failed to report. So what's happening in this situation? So in this case, everyone who we know that was aware of the situation is still employed. Rancher is going to be in court tomorrow, but the district says they will not really reveal whether or not the other employees who we know were aware of this are investigated. They say they are making changes. They are conducting an internal review, but they say there's not a lot that they can reveal because of employee confidentiality. We know we will stay on top of it for certain. We have your top stories next. We wrap things up with a look at a few of the headlines we're following for you today. Today is a WR weather alert day. Our team of meteorologists is tracking rain moving across our area. You can expect to see rain and spotty storms for the next several hours. That includes the evening commute. It's chilly out there too. Highs in the 50s. Be sure to keep a coat and umbrella close. Cumberland County deputies have arrested a man after two people were shot. This happened on Gillespie Street in Fayetteville. Deputies arrested Bradley Donahue. They say he shot two people as he was trying to get away and actually tried to enter a deputy's car before running in another direction. We know one of the victims is a man, the other a woman, and they are in the hospital getting treatment. DMV is dealing with a computer issue across the state. A mainframe computer connection 